Good morning, Dr. Abernethy and gentlemen. Um, it's been argued by supporters of the bill that those with pleural plaques have suffered harm, that the scarring on the membrane surrounding the lung is a physical injury and that damages should therefore be available. Can you each explain to the committee why you think that the harm is not sufficient to merit the awarding of damages? Uh, thank you. Um, thank you for your invitation to give evidence uh, uh, this morning on this beautiful day, uh, this beautiful September day. Um, we rely entirely on the decision which was unanimously taken by the House of Lords on the basis of completely agreed medical evidence. And that agreed medical evidence is that plural parts are benign. They do not have any symptoms associated with them other than the most exceptional of cases. They do not develop into more serious conditions. They, they, they are inert biologically. And uh, the only issue is that they give cause in some people to anxiety. The fundamental law of uh, delict and the law of liability is that harm has to be demonstrated for compensation to be paid and plural plaques do not demonstrate that harm. It's based on agreed medical evidence. Well, that's very clear, Mr. Stanley. Anybody else want to have a go? Yeah. Um, from my medical understanding and having um, read uh, with interest the medical evidence in Johnson, it was quite clear that, um, although it's not finally established, that um, the consensus is that total plaques are simply the body's physiological response to the presence of foreign fibres. And as such, um, there are, as a consequence of these fibres in the body, a release of chemical mediators which then create fibrous tissue which walls off these foreign fibres. And so, as a consequence of that, they, therefore, the body's uh, defence system is operating to effectively uh, prevent them from causing harm. And therefore, my submission would be that, in fact, facts um, are a good thing. They don't <coughs> cause harm. Harm is something which is pathological in the body where you get damage um, and where you usually get symptoms. These plaques are markers of exposure to asbestos. As a consequence of that exposure to asbestos, you know that um, some people get plaques, but in fact, the, in some studies it suggests that up to 50% don't get plaques, but they're equally exposed to asbestos. And therefore, uh, my view is that they don't cause harm at all. Yeah. You're saying then that, in fact, did I get you correctly, did I hear you correctly, that plaques are a good thing, that's what you said? Well, in fact, at the House of Lords, that is exactly what Lord Scott said when he was listening to senior counsel submissions on the matter. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that's a good thing? I don't think I can actually give you an answer to that, obviously. But that's what you just said. Well, in effect, that is my understanding of the medical evidence that plaques, in a way, are the body's way of trying to sort of wall off the bad fibres. Yeah. Would you say, Dr. Abernethy, Mr. Sterling said that um, they do not develop into more serious conditions it, it, well, that's what Mr. Stanley said. What would your view be as my, a medical person? Well, my Never. They, no, my position is as a, they are a marker that an individual who has been exposed to asbestos, and in fact, those people who have been exposed to asbestos who don't have plaques can equally have a slightly higher risk of developing mesothelioma or asbestosis. Um, so, in fact, that is the difficulty I see in this bill, but um, those who have been equally exposed, say, in the same factory setting, but don't have the plaques, have a slightly higher risk of developing mesothelioma or asbestosis, just as an individual with plaques does. Um, so it's not, they are certainly compared to the normal population, but that is the difficulty I have with this. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to go? To re-emphasise, and again, can I uh, record my thanks on behalf of FOIL for the opportunity to give more of evidence in this matter. But I think a fundamental point that should be uh, borne in mind is that it is the exposure which creates the risk of further disease, not the plaques per se. As a lawyer, that is my understanding of reading the overwhelming medical evidence in the matter. And as you rightly say, Mr. Butler, this is a question of, of medical evidence yeah. and at the end of the day the overwhelming medical evidence uh, is, and it doesn't appear to be in dispute, 
the overwhelming agreed medical evidence is that planks per se are harmless. You mentioned exposure, Mr Anderson. How would you or anyone else respond to supporters of the bill who say that plurifax sufferers have been wrongfully exposed to asbestos and are therefore entitled to seek compensation from those who acted negligently? Anyone want to have a go at that? I think the point I would, I would be very keen to re-emphasise here is that this bill, uh, as I see it, is not about culpability. It's got nothing to do with culpability. It is only concerned with whether harm has occurred. I think it's important to re-emphasise that to succeed in an action for damages for personal injury under the law of Scotland, there has to be a number of things. First of all, there has to be in existence a duty of care. The pursuer then has to show that that duty of care was owed to him. He has to show there has been a breach of that duty. And he then has to demonstrate that as a consequence of the breach, he suffered the harm complained of. And it's only the harm, as I read this bill, that we're concerned about today. And I would, with the greatest of respect to everyone in the committee, because I fully understand this is a very well-intentioned bill, but to my mind we should be focusing on the fundamental issue as to whether the various conditions detailed in the bill are harmful or harmless. The overwhelming medical evidence appears to be absolutely unequivocal that they are harmless. And culpability and breach of duty and negligence, to my mind, is not a relevant consideration in assessing the fundamental purpose of the bill. This comes back to my opening remark about the law of relict or liabilities is, is in England, which is fundamentally based on actual harm rather than exposure. And uh, we can all think of uh, many circumstances where people have been exposed to harm, but have, have been exposed to harmful chemicals, for example, uh, but have not developed a condition. Uh, the fundamental issue here is that as soon as you develop any sort of condition, be it asbestosis or um, increased risk of a heart attack from exposure to um, prescription drugs, say, then of course there's a case um, for compensation. But the actual uh, prospect of that happening or any anxiety engendered, engendered by the prospect of that happening uh, have never uh, in either English or Scottish law been actionable and this bill fundamentally uh, changes that. So it goes much wider than just the issue of plural facts, it goes to the whole issue of uh, harm, liability, delict. So what we've got then from this um, first couple of questions is an opinion from uh, tell me if I'm wrong, because Mr. Clayton and Mr. Thomas, you haven't um, said anything yet, that uh, plaques is a good thing and that it's harmless. Is that correct? Would anyone disagree with that in the panel? Interesting, in the sense that anyone who's had plural plaques, it's a marker that they've been exposed to asbestos. Absolutely. Um, so so, so no, forgive, really forgive me, Dr. Abernethy, but it was you yourself who said plaques are a good thing. Well, or you quoted somebody saying that without, without yeah. 